What's good, YouTube? This your boy, Hood Facts TV, and I'm back with another reaction video. Y'all know my motto. I'm not about to hold y'all up. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn on the notification bell so you can get notified when I drop more bangers like this one. Get in the comments. Talk to your boy. Y'all know I talk back. Smash that like button. Help your boy out. Let's get this to 50, 60 likes. And without further ado, we about to jump into this video. We got a video. This joint right here is called The Story of King Vaughn, a.k.a. Thingy Thing. I think that's what it means. Thingy Thing. I don't know what that stands for or anything like that. But we're we going to jump into this video. We're going to check it out. This is part one. It got um, three parts to it. I'm definitely going to do all three parts. Not back to back, but I'm definitely going to get to them. Um, but, um, yeah, we about to jump into this video. Let's get to it. It's 2012 and see. This is the story of Devon, Daquan, Bennett, also known as King Vaughn, or grandson. This is a very special story to me and other people who have known about Vaughn since 2012, and seen the journey Devon made from facing over a hundred years in prison, to becoming a millionaire and a superstar worldwide. Devon was known in both the United States and Europe, he was known for his music, but also for his notorious reputation in the streets. Devon Bennett, who was born on August 9, 1994, grew up on West 78th SD and S Hermitage Avenue, an area that in Chicago is also known as Killer Ward. There he lived with his mother and grandmother in a basement, Vaughn went to grammar school on 76th and Walcott. He said in an interview, that he barely got into trouble, just a little minor fights, but nothing serious. Vaughn had it pretty good when he grew up, he had what he needed, they were poor, and grew up in a dangerous and low income area, but he got what he needed as a child, much thanks to his mother, named Taisha, who was there for him throughout his upbringing. Vaughn also had one of his brothers and one of his sisters with him when he grew up, his sister Sky, and his brother Louis V. Kayla B., who is the more famous sister, grew up in another area of Chicago, that I will tell you more about later. King Vaughn, Kayla B. and young Bogo have the same father, but different mothers. Louis V., Sky and Vaughn have the same mother, but different fathers. This was the reason why Kayla and Bogo did not grow up together with Vaughn, as they had different mothers. However, they sometimes met when they were hanging out with their father. Young Bogo and King Vaughn actually have two songs together which is named, Struggle, and Randy Moss. mother fine as hell though she is cold like literally but i didn't know he had um three sisters i mean two sisters i only knew about the kayla b one i didn't know about the other one so but damn his look at his mama though his mama is cold wow <laughs> Devon was a good student when he went to Barton Elementary School, like I said before, Vaughn ended up in a few minor fights but nothing more serious than that. For example, Vaughn once knocked out a guy named Tim in front of the teacher in Spanish class in 7th grade. He went to school every day, enjoyed playing sports, and hanging out with his friends. Vaughn played baseball often, and was in the school team, he said that he later had to start bringing a weapon to every training and match. And that was why he finally decided to quit. It was a too great a risk for him to expose himself to. This was when he got a little older, and went to 8th grade, when Devon was 13 to 14 years old. This was the last year he went to Barton Elementary School. The following year, he started at Hyde Park Academy High School. It was at that school things really started to change and get
King Vaughn's father was in and out of jail for Vaughn's upbringing. His father's name was Walter E. Bennett. He was born on October 28, 1974 and tragically passed away on July 31, 2005, when King Vaughn was only 11 years old, yet old enough to understand and be aware that he will never meet his dad again. His father was called Silk, and from what I have heard, he was a legend from Ada Park, where he grew up. King Von mentioned his father in the song, Exposing Me, where he said, Rest in peace to Silk from Ada Park, that was the older me. I have not found any death article or any article at all on Walter. However, King Von's uncle, Range Roverhang, said that Walter was standing at a skating rink, when he got shot by a man with a sniper rifle from long range, which is very likely since GDs and BDs used to set up snipers in the project buildings. Range Rover Hang said that Silk was an absolute... They wasn't playing. They were setting up snipers in the building back in the day. The old heads wasn't playing, man. They was on some other type level. Like, you're not going to even see it, it coming. You stand outside, you just going to catch one. That's crazy. Blue demon with a huge heart in the streets, just like Vaughn. He could really see his brother in Vaughn. He also said that you did not want to be on Silk's bad side, he was no one to play with. Like I said earlier, Walter was in and out of jail through King Vaughn's upbringing. Just as Vaughn was later in his teens, he barely got to see his dad. Vaughn's mother was very angry with Walter, because he was never around his kids. So she took on all the responsibilities herself and raised her children by herself. His father and mother were already separated when Vaughn was born. His father was in jail and Vaughn did not get to meet him until he was around 8 years old. Many people I have talked to, have said that Vaughn was exactly like his dad, they had the same look that the girls fell for, the same personality, the same confidence and charisma and the same big heart in the streets. I do remember seeing him in videos on um, when King Von had passed. That's his uncle. Okay, I get it. Okay, okay. Range Rover. Okay. King Von had, unlike people like Duck and Melly, not so many known cousins. The cousins I know about are Marco from CMB and Abub from Dump Street slash Noon World. Abub is currently locked up for two homicides and one attempted murder that he committed together with Zoe from No Love City. The incident occurred in the 5100 block of South May Street about 340. Above and Zoe were sliding and spotted Bobby and Johnny and one other guy from Folly Boys. They opened fire on them, striking Johnny in the abdomen, Bobby in the chest, and the third guy multiple times in the legs. Bobby and Johnny were later pronounced dead at the hospital. The third guy, who was 24 years old, was taken to the hospital in serious condition but luckily, he survived. Abub is known to be one of Dump Street's top killers. He is scheduled to be released in 2060. The first cousin I mentioned, Marco, was one of CMB's top killers. Marco, 19, whose real name is DeMarco Bennett, was charged with first-degree murder in 2015, for the slaying of Andre Donner Jr., also known as Smiley from SMB. Marco spotted Smiley in the 7200 block of South May Street in Englewood. He shot him over 10 times, with bullets hitting him both in his chest and head. Marco then sped away from the scene in a vehicle, but the police actually managed to arrest him shortly after the murder. They pulled him over and Marco started running and threw away his gun, but was later arrested, and the gun was found. However, somehow Marco managed to beat the case, and was released in 2019. This really shows how easy you can get away with murder in Chicago. Marco was- That's why, that's why, um, there's so many murders in Chicago, because I know so many rappers or so many people from Chicago that beat murder cases.
It was like they're not the DA and the judges is not taking this serious. Like, it's fighting the murder charge at the same time as Von Fata's murder charge. They were actually cordial with each other in jail. Now many will wonder why I said actually. Well it is because Marco is really close friends with none other than Wooski from STL slash EBT. Wooski even mentioned Marco in the song, B.O.M., where he said, With my bro Marco, you know what that means, CMB Marco. CMB is clicked up with Jaro City and is also close with STL slash EBT. They dissed Vaughn a lot after his passing. King Von has always been BD. His father, Silk, was also BD, so it was natural for Von to also be BD, even though he grew up in Kill Award, which is mainly GDs. However, there were many within Kill Award who were BD, so Von was not alone. Von was close to people like Frico, who also was close with a few STL members such as Duck and Dutchy, who Von was actually around a few times, but never was cordial or cool with. This is why Duck has said, that King Von played both sides but that is not true. Frico, whose real name was Nico Husband, was shot and killed by the police in July 2011. The officer who killed Frico is named Marco Proagno, he said that Nico was trying to pull out a gun on him. In December 2013, Marco emptied a whole clip into a car full of teenagers, during a south side traffic stop, wounding two of the teenagers. Marco actually got convicted for this shooting, and was sentenced to five years in prison. Frico's mother, Priscilla Price, actually filed a lawsuit against Marco and the police department, for the slaying of her son. The lawsuit, which had given her $3.5 million, first got granted, but after further investigations, the lawsuit was turned down and Priscilla ended up with nothing. However, she became very happy three years later, when Marco was sentenced to five years in prison for the incident where he fired shots into a car full of teenagers. Kill Award later named their block Frico World to honor Frico. So I wonder what was the reason why um she didn't get paid because if the cops caused his death, she should have got paid. He should have put in this um story what was the reason why she didn't get paid instead of saying an um investigation because I really want to know what was going on with that man because she deserved to get paid every bit of that and that's not even enough. Look at this fool. They always look like that, right? They always look like the like that, right? Like the nerds that was in high school or something, you know. In 2006, when Devon was only 12 years old, he began to get more involved in the streets. However, he did not start playing with guns yet. But he robbed people, fought more often, stole cars and bikes, and also did burglaries around this time. For example, when Vaughn was 12, he stole a Buick, but he didn't know how to drive so it was pretty useless. Von said himself that he jumped off the porch in 2006 in the unreleased song, Wait, where he said, Been off that porch since like 06. Around this time, Kill Award was the only thing he knew, he knew no one from Parkway Gardens, and he did not know he would move there a little later in life. Like I said before, Von mostly hung around Frico who he was really close to, he also hung out a lot with his uncle Range Rover Hang who is from Kill Award. Range is not Vaughn's real uncle, but I'm going to call him that anyways, I will explain why later. His uncle actually recently released a diss song towards Quando Rondo and Lil Tim, with King Vaughn's crazy story beat, and flow. Unfortunately, Vaughn and Range had a fallout before Vaughn died. Range posted a picture on social media with FBG Duck when he was alive, and that's why Vaughn distanced himself from his uncle. 
Range Rover Hang said in an interview that he hung with Duck to make money with him, and didn't care that he was his nephew's enemy. Vaughn also had another uncle from Kill Award. Vaughn referred to him as his rich uncle. Yeah, you know, you playing with the other side, Vaughn didn't care about nobody from over there on 63rd, especially FBG Duck. That was like one of his biggest ops over there. So he definitely probably gonna cut off a family member for that. Uncle, and said that he really made sure that Vaughn and his mother had it good throughout his childhood. Other guys he hung around from Kill Award was EBK Juice, who in 2015, gave Vaughn a shout out on Twitter for being a demon. He was also close with Kivo, Lil BD, Gotti, Lil Sean, Boss CJ and Lil Sean, all from Kill Award. King Vaughn was even in Boss CJ's music video for the song, Where I'm From. Like right around the time where FPG uh Duck had blew up too. Yeah, King Von didn't like that at all. say them boys really was young into it and jumped off the porch early look how young they look look at these old pictures of these guys man they so young they really 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 was living this something that has not been noticed anywhere is the work king von put in for kill award when Vaughn got a little bit older, when he was around 14 to 15 years old in 2008 to 2009, him, Lil BD and DBK Juice began drilling on G-Ville, which is Kill Award's main enemies. EBK Juice was, among others, actually the one that put on Vaughn and taught him how to move in the streets, and how to do hits. Juice was a mentor to many young people in Kill Award. Von slid many times on G-Ville together with various people from Kill Award. To my knowledge, Von did not manage to kill anyone from G-Ville, but I can nearly assure you that he shot people. Together with Lil BD and Juice, Von shot at people like Batty, Katie and Santana from G-Ville. Even at this age, King Von was a real hot-tempered guy, he fought often, he never backed down, and he always stood his ground. He gained respect quickly through his way of moving already at that age. Just like I said before, many people said that Von was a copy of his father. Around these years, was also when King Von started to get girls dragged after him. They fell very easily for his appearance, his personality and way of moving. He had a very strong charisma, which accompanied him all his life. The same Von you knew 2020, was the same Von since a little kid, he never put on a fake image. Around this time, Davon was called Von Dutch. It is now that we move on to King Von had the girls, huh? He, he always had him a little. He didn't need the money to to get. See, that's what I be saying. Some people don't need money to get women. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of people don't need cash, man. A lot of us already, you know what I'm saying? We just who we are. Can you know what I'm saying? Bag of shorty. To a more familiar part of King Von's life, in 2009, Devon moved with his mother, brother sister and stepfather to Parkway Gardens, today known as O'Block. They moved into an apartment on the first floor. 
Vaughn used to sleep on a mattress on the floor, the first night in the parkway, he heard gunshots, and was told by his mother to stay away from the windows. When day Vaughn first moved into Parkway Gardens, he knew no one, he was a stranger. As always when you are a new guy in such an environment, Vaughn had to prove himself to the people who lived there. Vaughn had to fight almost every day, stealing cars and robbing people. However, he had not started shooting on any of Wick City's enemies yet. King Vaughn's stepfather sold drugs in the area, both crack, weed and other drugs, and brought in a lot of money. Because of that, King Vaughn got most of what he wanted in terms of clothes, phones and jewelry. The first people Vaughn got to know and hang with in Parkway Gardens, were Boss Top, Kata, J Money, D Roy, Duke, BJ, Big A, Trey Five, E Dog, Sheroid, White White, Chief Keith and Patoon. Basically the most known members today, and people who were with him until his death. They were also very young at this time, and many of them had done just as little in the street, if not less, than Vaughn had done. It was just that they had known each other longer, especially Boss Top, BJ and Big A, as all came from No Love City. Many wonder who Keta was, well, Keta was a girl from Wick City that everyone loved, she was one of those girls everyone could hang out with, and talk to, she looked after them. She was also in a relationship with Booby from Wick City, which made her even more popular. Booby was a ladies man in the area but also a well-respected member in Parkway. Kata was also known to beat up girls pretty bad, there were two fights with two girls, where she ended up beating them up badly, which she got famous and respected for. Kata, whose real name was Nakata Washington, tragically passed away on September 3rd, 2009, due to natural causes, only 20 years old. After her death, Booby and others from Wick City, printed shirts with pictures of Keta to honor her. Later, many from Parkway started saying Keta World, to honor her name. Keta also had two older brothers, Nuwap and Joey, who was, and still is, two big trappers in a block. Vaughn gave them a shout out in the unreleased song, To Kapak for example. However, in March 2015, Joey was shot in the head by LC from Taekwon World. Fortunately, Joey survived the shot but the bullet went through his right eye, and tragically blinded him. Taekwon World gave Elsie the nickname, Elsie leave them blind, after the incident. And they was all young. been a little bit older than them she was 20 yeah and it was like in it it was like 16 17 years she was a little bit older than them after moving to parkway gardens king von also began attending high school at hyde park academy the school was filled with people from wick city stl slash ebt young money kilowatt 600 jaro city taekwon world NLMB and many other guys from different sets. It was really at this school, 
that King Von started beefing with Wick City's main enemies for the first time. At this school went the two rappers FBG Duck from STL slash EBT, and Lil Mark from 051 Young Money. Lil Herb also went to this school. In high school, King Von was often involved in fights but other students, mainly Wick City's enemies. There were often fights in the dining room, and Von had to go to the principal on several occasions. You could almost say that it was at this school that it all began. This is where King Von's hatred for STL slash EBT and Jaro really began. It was at school that the fights started, which led to fights outside the school, which I told in the video about the story of FBG Duck. Later the fights led to robberies and shootings, and eventually murders. Of course, I do not put any blame on the school itself, but I mean that it was at Hyde Park, that it all started. However, just as I told in the FBG Duck video, Older Wick City and STL members had already shot at each other. But it was at that particular school where the younger hatred began against each other, that would later lead to a bloody war. A very, very bloody war that's still going on to the day, to this day. Just from school fights. Wow. They literally, yep, they go low mark. There you go, right there. Yep, and King Ron right there. That's crazy. But King Von looked like he looking at him sideways, though. Look like he looking at that boy sideways. Look at his eyes. If you can see his eye, his eye is looking sideways. Wow, right at your boy. King Von was in, he, he didn't like him then. Now we are in the year 2010, the year when King Von turned 16 years old. It was now that things really started to happen. King Von's first run-in with law came around August in 2010, just a few days before his birthday. It's a little difficult to know exactly when he got locked up, because Devon was a minor, which means there are no public records of it when this happened, but I did manage to find tweets and interviews where he mentioned it a bit. King Von got charged with armed robbery, where he allegedly robbed someone of his car at gunpoint. In the song Armed and Dangerous, from his latest album, Welcome to a Block, he said that he was facing 21 to 45 years in prison. But because Devon was a minor, the prosecutors and the judge agreed to drop the charges if Devon attended boot camp for a couple of months. So Von beat the case, and got out but was shortly arrested yet again in January 2011 and was sentenced to juvenile detention for 15 months. Von spent the rest of 2011 in juvenile detention, and yes, this means that Von had nothing to do with the murder of Dale from STL slash EBT, who was killed by D. Rose from 600, on December 3rd, 2011. I know I was the first to put that rumor out, and I have seen many other YouTube channels go with it. I should have done better research at that point. Now, yo, y'all really be going on a on Twitter and going all the way back to 2011, and yeah, y'all really do research, man. So big ups to uh, uh Chicago since '88, cause he really be going all the way back on these guys' Twitters and Riddick to get the actual information. On August 25th, 2010, while King Von was fighting the armed robbery charge. Breezy from Wick City was shot dead, during a major fight between STL slash EBT and Wick City members. So I see, and 12-year-old Wooski, were the alleged killers. Almost exactly one month after Reezy was killed. Not 12 years old, Wooski was 12 years old and caught a body, which is crazy ridiculous. At 12 years old, you shouldn't even be outside let alone playing with guns like bro you can't even you can't even buy nothing at the store like no cigarettes no no nothing at the store you can't even 
you're not even legal to even go to um juvenile jail i don't think you was 12. wick city took revenge on stl slash ebt boss top od and j money from the wick were out sliding on stl's main territory they spotted lil four whose real name was jeremy marshall at the intersection of 63rd street and rhodes avenue about 1 50 pm boss top and od jumped out of the car and approached jeremy jeremy started running but boss top and od ran after and managed to shoot him in the back several times boss top and od then ran back to the car and fled the scene jeremy collapsed on the street and was shortly after taken to northwestern memorial hospital and was later declared dead the war was now underway between STL slash EBT slash Jaro and Wick City. Once Vaughn got out in late 2010, older guys from both sides had started handing out guns to the younger guys, Vaughn also got one as well, since his other gun got seized in connection with his arrest. Vaughn began sliding on STL slash EBT and Jaro City with other young Wick City members like D-Roy, BJ, Duke, E-Dog and J-Money. I see him all the time um, with um, Little Dirk. He be with Little Dirk a lot. I didn't know he was from um, Old Block. I actually didn't know where he was from, but I'm glad that he's putting names to faces now that I see him. Now when I see him in the music videos, I know who they are and who they, what role they play in certain things. You dig what I'm saying? <laughs> definitely remember seeing him he the one that just told jay main kick jay main out of old block well we probably didn't kick him out but um had a, a, a few words to say to jay main just as i mentioned earlier king von got locked up yet again between the first and 10th of january 2011 he got got locked up for 15 months for unknown charges, it may have been for a gun, or as a punishment if he violated the boot camp agreement, he never wanted to tell what it was in an interview with DJ Small's eyes. Like I also said earlier, this means that he had nothing to do with the murder of Dale Fisher from STL slash EBT. While King Von was locked up, the war continued and worsened between the two different sides. Since I don't want to rehearse everything from the video about FBG Duck, I will now quickly go through the most important events in 2011, during the time King Bun was locked up. And let's say, Wick City, 600 and Brick City got absolutely torched in much of 2011. On February 11th, 2011, just days after King Bun got locked up, Tuco was murdered by the brothers Cortez and Courtney from TYMB, Obama, Face and Manny from TYMB were also present. The murder was a retaliation for the murder of D.Y. from 065 Young Money, who was killed by Chicken, Taki and Seaball, from STL slash EBT. STL slash EBT named their block Tukaville to honor Tuka's name. Six months later, Baldi from 600 was killed by Domo and Cleon from Mob. This was 600's first loss. One month later, Two days after King Von turned 17, O.D. Perry from Wick City was killed by K.I. and F.B.G. Butta, both from STL slash EBT, and Beans from Mob. Wick City named their block, O Block, to honor O.D. Perry. Everybody loves saying Tuka name in the music, man. Tuka is like one of the most famous young guys that didn't even get a chance to see everybody's success and a lot of people uh got successful from using his name as well chief keith king von uh little dirt a lot of people use his name and really got successful off of it <laughs> Oh, 
so these the two brothers that um started these are two these are two guys that really started the 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 gunplay decision that they made to take out Tuka started so many people to lose their life and so many families to be hurt these twins <laughs> Shipping for a small business shouldn't be complicated, and with Shippo, it's not. As an artist running my small business from home, Shippo is how I have... That is EBT. Yo, what's so sad about this is there's so many people in this video probably gone. Okay, Dutty and Young has been Young and been around from the jump. FBG Duck, Brick, RP Brick, Billionaire Black. I don't really know these guys right here too much, but let's get into it. <music> That's who they name O Block after right here. See this Wick City, that's what they was called before, I guess, in the beginning. But after he got killed, that's when they start naming it O Block. FBG <music> Butter funny as hell. RP to KI. She was a demon too, I guess. Um, damn, ain't it that like dry snitching? I, you know, Butter did that and you put him out here like, like that? I don't know. I remember seeing his face too. One month later, both Thang and Lil Steve were killed within seven days. This was retaliation for Hadi and Dalvin from Jaro City, who were both killed by Thang. Before Domo from Jaro City shot Thang he said, this is for Hadi, and then killed him, according to Cook County State's attorney. Domo is currently in jail for the murder. Lil Steve was killed by Lil Scrap from Mob. Scrap actually got charged for the murder, but ended up beating it. Eight days later it was time for another murder, this time it was Jizzle from Squirt Town, who was killed by Q2 from Jaro City. A month later it was time again. Platoon from Wick City, who King Vaughn was super close to, got killed by Lil B, Brick and Wooski, all from STL slash EBT. As you can see, 600 and Wick City really had a hard time in the beginning. STL slash EBT, Jaro and Mob were passing out a lot of smoke. However, that would reverse. One month after the murder of Platoon, it was time for 600 to take revenge on Jaro City for the murder of Thang and Jizzle. Cide and Tay 600 caught 2-2 from Jaro in an alley, and shot him multiple times, 2-2 was found dead in the alley. After this, Jaro City adopted the nickname 2-2 Gang to honor their fallen member. In fact, the same day 2-2 was killed, 600 also drew the first blood between them and 051 Young Money, when Tang put two shots into D Street's head. A month later, there were again 600 who would make a fuss, this time it was Dale from STL slash EBT, 
who got spotted by D. Rose in the 6200 block of South St. Lawrence Avenue in the city's West Woodlawn neighborhood. D. Rose leaned out from the two-door silver vehicle, and shot Dale in the chest, who was later pronounced dead at the hospital. This was the last murder between the rival sets from 2011. However, the next year, 2012, would go down as one of the most violent years in the Drill Era's history, and King Vaughn, who got released in early 2012, would begin his violent murder spree. He was dead serious about 51 people that died. Like some of them songs, when people be making some of them songs, they be like 51 dead ops, 61 dead ops after Driller made his, all them dead ops songs came out. I literally thought people was just making that up. I did not know this was actual people that passed away from this game violence. That is really, really deep, man. And a lot of nonsense. <laughs> Ain't no 600 brother this that's why he um say steve drive already all, all the time okay is it his little brother or big brother i'm pretty sure that's his little maybe it's his big brother yeah because they're gonna make no right there i'm on point with some of the stuff you know what i'm saying but i you know this definitely helped my um helped me a lot Now we have come to the year 2012, a very special year, not least for King Von. One month before King Von was released, Von tragically lost another close friend from a block. K.I. and Bostrella were out lurking on the 6400 block of South King Drive, they spotted Sheroid, 19, from a block, across the street outside of a store. Bostrell, with a red beam attached to his gun, shot Sheroid from over 20 feet away with the bullet hitting him in the head. The shot could be a lucky shot but Bostrell was, unlike many other gang members from Chicago, quite good with guns, and even uploaded a tutorial on YouTube, on how to assemble and reassemble your gun. Sheroid was found dead on the spot by police at about 6.46 p.m. Once Vaughn was released in March 2012, everything had changed, while Vaughn was locked up, wars had worsened, and new wars had been created. 600 had full war against Mob, Jaro City, STL slash EBT and 051 Young Money. The war between a block and STL slash EBT had worsened, and not least, Von had lost three really close friends, OD, Patoon and Sheroid. Von was full of hatred. In the song, Don't Wanna Be Me, King Von says that everything changed in 2012, he had to get his hands dirty and pull his mask out, which he did not plan when he was in prison. But he felt compelled, he had to get back for his friends. One month later, he got back.
One thing you must be clear about, is that King Bun was an absolute maniac in 2012. He never hesitated to shoot, nor kill. He got caught up in killing and could not stop. He got addicted to it, and became an absolute monster in the streets. On April 28, 2012, King Von began his murder spree. King Von, D. E. Roy, Duke and BJ were out for revenge after the murder of their close friend Sheroy. They were not looking for any particular member of STL slash EBT, the one they saw, that person's life would be taken. They were out sliding on STL's main block, 63rd and St. Lawrence. Marlon Monroe, also known as King Doc, had just been at his aunt's house and painted. After a few hours of painting, he became thirsty and decided to go to a nearby convenience store, to buy something to drink, but he never got to enter the store and buy his drink. King Von, T. Roy, Duke and BJ spotted him on the way. Marlin saw them and tried to run, but Von and T. Roy started spraying bullets towards him. The bullets caught up to him, and he was struck multiple times in his chest and arm. Doc stumbled and fell into a patch of tall weeds in an empty lot that adjoins the corner shop. The police came to investigate the April 28th shooting, cleaned up the scene and took off, his family said. It was not until hours later that Monroe's body was discovered in the tall weeds. A 16-year-old relative who was in a rush trying to make curfew was crossing through the abandoned lot when he found Monroe's lifeless corpse, in the 6300 block of South Yo, that shows to tell you right there that the police didn't don't really care because what do you mean? They didn't check the whole area. You mean to tell me that young man was laying out there for hours before somebody stumbled over his body and found him? The police is the ones that's dropping them guns off over there and letting them boys kill themselves, man. It gotta be, man, because like what? St. Lawrence Avenue. When he was found, he was rushed to John H. Stroger, Junior Hospital of Cook County where he was pronounced dead at 10.14 p.m. And he was still alive? He could have made it, probably. Marlon had just returned to the free world, after being imprisoned for stealing a car, he got out on parole two months before he was killed. Before his death, Marlon was trying to get a painter's license, and had been doing maintenance for property owned by his aunt. He had received a GED while in prison, his family said. After his jail stint, Monroe had been trying to tell younger relatives to avoid a life of crime. He was showing his little brother the path he needed to take, said his aunt. Deborah Jackson, adding that Monroe had been looking for a steady job. He said he was ready, he did not want to be in that situation no more, Jackson said. Marlin was described as gentle and kind-hearted, he was not in a gang, family members said. The 16-year-old boy who found Marlin, was none other than Modell McCambry who was a cousin of Marlon, and whom we will come to later in the story. Modell was cutting through the store parking lot, when he stumbled over the body. He ran to tell people that he had found a dead body, and when the police came, and turned the body over, Modell saw it was his cousin, Marlon Monroe. The two teens came from a large family, that is known by most folks on the block, because they had lived there for a long time through generations. Florin and John Monroe. The grandparents of Modell, Marlon and also Miles Turner, has raised six girls in their home in the 6,500 block of South Roads. In the course of more than 30 years, they also raised several of their nearly 40 grandchildren and great-grandchildren in that home. Modell was devastated after the death of his cousin, and therefore started to get more involved in the criminal life. He started to hang around people like K.I., Duck and Bostrell and was soon a member of the gang STL slash EBT. The murder of Marlon was a nightmare for the grandparents Florin and John, but a few months later the nightmare would worsen further. In a side note in the story, 
which is important to tell, to make you understand the whole story. On June 24, 2012, Tyquin Tyler was shot dead outside a party, in the 6200 block of South Rhodes Avenue, Jaro Territory. 13-year-old Tyquin was at a party with his 19-year-old sister, when a fight broke out around 1.20 a.m. The two siblings ran away from the party, and onto a street and then into a nearby alley. Two older guys, Wayne and Nate from Jaro City followed them, and fired shots at Tyquin, striking him once in the chest. Tyquin collapsed in the alley, and when paramedics found him, he was already dead on the spot. According to police, neither Tyquin nor his sister were in a gang. However, it is quite well known that Tyquin was a member of the same gang as his killer, Nate and Wei, who were members of Jaro City. It was no coincidence that Tyquin was killed. He was best friends with none other than the female assassin Ki from STL slash EBT, who he got to know through FBG Buddha, who originally came from Jaro. The three became very close friends around the middle of 2011, roughly after OD from Wick City was killed. Tyquin jumped off the porch in early 2012. He did not shoot any ops yet, but he went on robbing sprees almost every other week, along with K.I. and Butta. They often robbed people from dips at 650, E-Block and even guys from his own set, Jaro City. Wow. So he was out there, you know what I'm saying, acting crazy. That's why they say, man, whatever you put out in this universe come back to you, man, no matter how old you is, no matter how young you is. You know what I'm saying? If you do good, if you do positive, man, positive gonna come back to you. If you out there doing negative things, negative gonna come back to you, man. For sure. Man, look at his face. Look how young he is. Out there doing robberies. Where's the parents at? I keep saying this. The parents must be gotta be gang members too. Because this is just ridiculous, man. Got him. He's a he was a baby. Throwing up gang signs. Tyquin was taught by Jakira to rob older guys, because the younger ones were not close to the older members, so it did not matter if they did anything against them. The older guys were also less likely to retaliate in any type of way, because older guys have in many cases stopped playing with guns, stopped shooting and killing people. For the most part, it worked for Tyquin, along with K.I., he robbed multiple people from different sets they actually were cool with. Tyquin's robbing spree, along with him starting to hang with STL's main killers, made his name ring bells, and he became well known across the GD sets in the area, but also for their main enemies, O'Block and 600. Tyquin made himself a big target. All it took was for someone to not care about his age, and try to kill him, and that's exactly what happened in early 2012, when he got shot at for the first time, by none other than King Vaughn. A few weeks prior to the incident, Vaughn had gotten shot at by K.I. and Wooski on King Drive. Vaughn luckily managed to escape the situation, and was not touched by any bullets. After the incident, Vaughn was out to kill either K.I. or Wooski, already this early in the story. He wanted K.I. for O.D. and Sheroid, and Wooski for Reezy and Patoon. Vaughn was also out for Jakira's close friend FBG Butta for O.D but also for Butta allegedly beating up King Von back in 2010. A few weeks after the incident, Von and Scud from a block walked around on EBT's block, looking to score. They spotted Tyquin, Wooski and K.I. across the street, and started spraying bullets at them without hitting anyone, and Kira, Wooski and Tyquin were quickly out of sight, 
as they ran away through a nearby alley. people just to get high huh so what was they getting when they was robbing people because if you robbing your own people that's just as broke as you you wasn't probably getting no more than 100 to 300 dollars and that's just to get high just to get you some smoke and get you some lean or whatever that's crazy that's crazy you really risking your life for that short bit of money About a month and a half before Tyquin's death, he made a big mistake, he robbed Nate from Jaro City. Tyquin did not know that this particular OG, was a killer and one of the guys who did not qualify as a stain or lick he could hit. Nate was really with it, even at this age. He could not tolerate Tyquin getting away with robbing him. K.I. actually was familiar with this information, and tried to make things right between the two, and succeeded for a while. It was all cool between the two for a couple of weeks, because Kira thought she had talked Nate into saying that Tyquin did not know better, because he was just a child. All of this only for a couple of weeks later for Nate to hit up Wayne, and plot on killing Tyquin, which they did, and ended up getting locked up for. After the murder of Tyquin, Tyquin World was formed, which at first was just another name for Jaro City, just like Tutu Gang, or Hottie World. Tyquin World was actually never supposed to become its own set, even people like K.I. and Lil Bubba, who's obviously a member of it now, was against the whole idea of creating Tyquin World. The reason for this, was because the people who came up with the idea around mid-2013, did not know Tyquin so well, which is why K.I. and others did not like it. Tyquin's death was also a reason why K.I. became bitter against Jaro City, Others swept it under the rug and did not blame Jaro as a whole. Dutchie was also bitter against Jaro in the beginning, but got over it after a few years. Push me, and then just hurt me, till I can get... But a young boy, um, shouldn't have been robbing people in his own gang, like... That gotta be the most stupidest thing to do, like, you robbing people that know you, that know where you that know where you move and know how you move and know who you be around. That's like the stupidest thing, man. Like, I'm not, like, you ask for that. And then you robbing an older dude, somebody that's been in the game for a minute, that know how to, to chill and lay low for a minute and let stuff calm down and let you think everything is okay. And then as soon as you think everything okay, he pop your head off. That's crazy. What made the relationship between K.I. and Jaro City even worse, was that Jaro seemed to co-sign the idea of Taekwon World, with the majority of Taekwon World being made up of guys from Jaro City, along with a couple of STL members like K.I.'s brother, who was also close to Taekwon just like herself, and Lucky, who claimed Taekwon World at first, but went back to mostly affiliating himself with just STL, because what many people do not know, about half of Taekwon World was always looked at as goofies, trying to get clout off Taekwon's name. But after many of the shorties like Lil Bubba, DB, Tuan, D Money, LC and others started to do more in the streets, and eventually started to catch bodies, it became its own set. Truth to be told, if KI still had been alive today, she would probably have been Taekwon World herself after all. The reason I say this is because K.I. was on the verge of taking 600 Thang's idea, and starting her own thing, with her being the captain of the team.
Now we come to the part where we talk about the murder which would lead to the death of White White. Of course, I'm talking about the murder of Dirty Rel from STL slash EBT slash Jaro City, which would later lead to the murder of White White from a block, just a few hours later. On the 8th of August 2012, a day before King Von's birthday, D. Roy, King Von, D. Rose and Manny from 600 were out in traffic, on East 56th Street in the Washington Park neighborhood, which is approximately a five-minute drive from Parkway Gardens. T. Roy, Vaughn, Manny and D. Rose were not out looking for someone special, they just rode around smoking and listening to music. But as always when you are out sliding like this, you are prepared, because just like King Vaughn said in an interview, the day you ain't looking for him, you're going to walk into him, and you will not have your mask, and will not be ready. Vaughn could some days be out in the traffic for over four hours, just riding around, smoking and listening to music, but he made sure he and the boys he rode with, were always ready. They had their guns and had their mask, in case they would unexpectedly bump into an enemy, where they did not think they would see him. Anyways, back to the incident. Vaughn and the others saw Dirty Rel walking on the sidewalk, D. Roy pulled out his gun, and shot him with multiple shots. Dirty Rel, whose real name was Daryl Joshua, was taken to John H. Stroger Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Dirty Rel was an older member from Jaro slash STL. According to the police, Terrell had passed gang ties, but that he had left that life behind him, and moved to Peoria. The police said it is unclear why Josuha was in Chicago on this day. The retaliation would come soon after the murder of Dirty Rel. Both Jaro and STL got hurt after the murder of Rel, Wooski from STL slash EBT, and 50 shots from Jaro City, who was really close friends, and were the two who really held Jaro City and STL slash EBT together, decided to go to Parkway to try to retaliate immediately on Oblock. Usually, when the other side tries to retaliate this fast, it's without success, or they succeed, but someone gets caught and has to spend the rest of their life in jail. This is because the police, in most cases, directly receive the information about which gang was involved in the murder, and are therefore prepared in case a quick retaliation would come against the block that was involved in the murder. In this case, police knew about a block's involvement in the murder of Dirty Rel, just like they knew after the murder of FBG Duck, therefore they decided to post up with cars and officers around Parkway Gardens, just like after the murder of Duck. Wooski and 50 Shots knew about this, but decided to take the risk anyway. They went to East 63rd Street and South Martin Luther King Drive and spotted White White outside of a store. King Von was with him, and had just bought him a pill of some sort. Then Von went into the store, and when Von was in the store, 50 Shots and Wooski took the opportunity to score. They walked up to him, and 50 Shots shot him in his chest once, but what they did not know, was that police officers were patrolling exactly that street. The police officers saw when 50 shots shot White White in the chest, and when they came to the scene, 50 shots started to shoot at the officers, without hitting any of them. However, the officers returned fire, and shot 50 shots in his leg, but the two still managed to flee the scene. It was all over in a couple of seconds. This is, I, I remember that was like around the story when uh, King Von said that's when he turned into a savage. But I didn't know Wooski and your whole boy had something to do with it. I thought like it was like random. I didn't think that it was um from the other side.
When King Von heard the shots, he ran out of the store, and saw one of his best friends lying on the ground, with a blood stain on his chest that only got bigger and bigger. At first, Von thought he was good, because he was just hit once, and Whitey actually hung in there for a while, but was tragically pronounced dead the next morning at Stroger Hospital. The police could soon after the shooting arrest 50 shots, and he was charged three days later with first-degree murder, and two counts of attempted murders. 50 Shots, whose real name is Darren Williams, is still held in the county to this day without bail, he hasn't actually been convicted yet. Truth to be told, the odds of Darren being released isn't high, if it's true that the police officers saw him shooting white white. The strange thing is that he has been sitting for eight years now, without having been convicted for it, despite the fact that the evidence against him is so strong. Either way, I do not think he will get out anytime soon. 50 Shots is one of Jaro City's top members, probably the most outstanding, if you don't count Dome. Actually, 50 Shots didn't slide that much, but when he did, it was always someone who got killed, or shot. He often slid with people like Torrance and Blocks, and when he didn't feel like sliding, he sent shorties like Lil Mike and Butta to shoot up DYMB, 600 and Oblock. He once walked inside the gates of Parkway Gardens, along with Torrance, in broad daylight and shot at several members from Oblock. He was a beast. He was crazy. Like, he went in there and just... Opened it, opened the door, opened the gates of old black and went in there and started banging stuff up. Yeah, he was one of them ones. White White, whose real name was Tony Dunn, was a love member from a block. To my knowledge, he wasn't a killer nor a shooter, he was more known for trapping in Parkway. It was just a coincidence that 50 Shots and Wooski spotted him, they weren't looking for anyone in specific, they just wanted a member from a block. Did for tat. Von and Whitey was really close, they always hung together, smoked together, popped pills together, and made money together. He was a cool guy that everyone wanted to be around, and who looked out for his friends and family. Something happened with Bun after the murder of Whitey, he saw his friend get shot and bleed out in front of him, something happened with his brain. Like he said himself in the song, Demon, from his latest album, Whitey got killed, I seen it, I was right there, still can't believe it, shit turned me into a demon, police ask me, I ain't see nothing. The thing is, King Von saw the two who were there, since Wooski somehow got away, and 50 shot didn't tell on him, Wooski became number one, together with K.I., on King Von's hatred list. It was them he was going after, since he couldn't get to 50 shots. K.I. was dissing White White a lot on Twitter, she knew it would hurt him. Von really changed after this, he became extremely dangerous and reckless in the streets. He would put the entire block on his back and was going to hurt the people who hurt him. In September, 2012, an altercation occurred between King Von and K.I., which sparked their personal beef, and their infamous fake relationship that Von built up between them. It was after this altercation that Vaughn's infatuation with her really began. The altercation took place on a train. King Vaughn and other members from a block spotted K.I. on the train, and beat her up badly. They then left her on the train, and King Vaughn wasted no time and went straight to Twitter to mock Jakira, where he said, among other things, that he should have spit on her after he finished up beating her. Vaughn followed up this incident by shooting up St. Lawrence and Jaro City, twice, in the same week. Von was angry. After the incident on the train, King Von gained a slight advantage on the personal level over K.I., however, K.I. killed a close friend of King Von, O.D. Perry, and followed up the train incident by shooting up a block. 
But the thing is, Von wasn't planning on letting go of the pressure he had on STL and Jaro, but mainly on KI and Wooski. Truth to be told, he was just getting started. He wanted to hurt both Wooski and KI, by either killing one of them, or killing someone close to them, which he eventually did. At this time, Von was actually looked at as a lame, people did not take him seriously, even though he already had a body, and was responsible for multiple shootings, maybe it was because he had big mouth, or that he got jumped on a bus once by STL, and gotten beat up by Buddha, either way, Von knew that he had to prove himself at this time. A couple of weeks after the train incident, Von would show what kind of pressure he was capable of putting on them. In October 2012, he would start letting STL, Jaro and Mob know what he was really about. Within the next two months, Von had caught four bodies. Man. Opticos get beat up on the train lacking. Think about it. That's why I say in one of my videos, Vaughn always been a troll, man. <laughs> he said he can't leave it in the street. You was on a train. Yo, <laughs> Vaughn been a troll ever since day one. Oh, that's where he got the little title thing from. Okay. Doing my thingy thing and all that. Time to put the pressure on them. This was the first part of this story, thank you for watching. Rest in peace to all who have fallen victim to gang violence. Part 2 coming soon. If yeah, that was crazy man, like that was just the beginning, like they need to make a movie of, of this. Like, I'm pretty sure this movie will be fire if they put, you know what I'm saying? If they figure out to put how to put it together, it'd definitely be a dope movie. But I'm pretty sure they don't care about the inner city. They happy that young black men are killing each other, man. You know how that go. But y'all know my motto. I'm not about to hold y'all up, man. We definitely going to get to part two very soon, man. Smash that like button for your boy. Because I definitely be sitting here in this chair for hours. Plus, I got to edit the video. So do me a big favor, man, and go ahead and smash that like button. But y'all know my motto. I'm not about to hold y'all up. If you're new to my channel, man, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn on the notification bell for yourself so you can get notified when I drop more bangers. Talk to your boy. Get in the comments. I talk back. And I'm up out of here, man. Part two coming soon. Okay.